How do planets form? Long ago, icy stones were thought to be the seeds of planet formation. It is believed that these frosty, outer regions of the disk that encircles the young star are where these frozen substances drift toward it. As per the hypothesis, these pebbles would release a significant amount of cold water vapor as they approach the star, providing both solids and water to planets that are just starting off. But the James Webb Space Telescope agrees to disagree. A young star like our Sun, called Desti Chameleontis, is being hammered by harsh ultraviolet radiation, something that the universe has never witnessed. Theories suggest that planets in such systems need more time to form compared to a disk being vaporized by X-rays, which causes the emission of ultraviolet light. But, when JWST checked in on SDCHAR again, it came across no unusual emission or excess UV light. Conditions in the disk of SDCHAR quickly changed in cosmic time forcing astronomers to decode the importance of the inconsistent evidence and its involvement in the creation of other solar systems. This finding opens a new and exciting perspective into the study of planet formation. Scientists using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope made a breakthrough revelation about how planets are formed. The Webb Telescope found clear evidence of the element neon in the dusty disk around the young sun-like star Esti Chameleontis, following up on an unusual reading made by NASA's former infrared flagship observatory, Spitzer Space Telescope. The neon values from Spitzer and Webb differ, implying a previously unreported shift in high-energy radiation reaching the disk that ultimately leads to its evaporation and a decrease in the amount of time planets may form. This might give us the answer. How did we get here? SD Char is similar to our Sun, a young T Tauri star, 4.5 billion years ago at the dawn of the solar system. Observing these other early systems is the closest we can get to going back in time to witness the origin of our tale as the disk of material that surrounded the Sun after it formed included the building blocks for Earth and maybe life. Neon is used as a benchmark to understand what type and how much the radiation is destroying around the star. When Spitzer surveilled SHR in 2008, it saw an anomaly, with neon readings unlike any other young t Tauri disk. Planets are basically in a race against time to form up in the disk, before it evaporates. In 2008, Spitzer analyzed SC Char and noticed an anomaly. Neon readings that were not seen in any other young T Tauri disk. Neon 3, which is usually rare in protoplanetary disks being attacked by high-energy X-rays, was detected, and that made a difference. This showed that UV light, rather than X-rays, was the source of high-energy radiation in the SD char disk. The UV versus X-ray disparity is not just the only anomalous finding in a sample of 50 to 60 young star disks, but it also has crucial indications for the disk's lifespan and possible planets. But when the team came back to study it with the Webb telescope, they had a surprise in waiting the bizarre Neon 3 signal had almost disappeared, showing the ordinary X-ray radiation supremacy. The team believes that the changes in Neon signatures in the SD char system are caused by changing wind, which soaks up UV radiation while allowing X-rays to pound the disk. As per the scientists, winds are typical in a system with a recently formed active star but it is reasonable to catch the system during a peaceful, wind-free time, as Spitzer did. The scientists are already putting together future studies of SD char using Webb and other telescopes to solve its mysteries. It will be critical to study SD char and other young systems in multiple wavelengths of light, such as X-ray and visible light, to discover the true nature of this variability we've discovered stated Boston University co-author Celie Pittman. 
It's possible, the brief, quiet periods dominated by extreme UV radiation, are common in many young planetary systems, but we just have not been able to catch them. The cosmos is showing us once again, that none of its processes are as easy as we would like them to be. We must reconsider, re-examine, and obtain further data. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments. Drop your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for more such interesting space controversies and updates. Orbit. Beyond the Blue.